a capital X will delete before the person. Unless you move. So uppercase X is like backspace. I didn't know. Exactly. Know so when your backspace key is broken. Exactly. Um, y is to yank. Uh, now we get to copy and paste. Um, Vim keeps a running set of buffers of stuff that you have, uh, well, one of changes that you've made, and then of uh, words and things that you've deleted. Uh, where's our cursor right now? Um, what about your head? So, Sam, yes, sir. let's yank the current line. Uh, type YY to yank the current line. I think I just know. Yeah. Uh, and what that says is it's taken the entire current line and yanked it into the, into the, the copy line. And then if you put P to paste, or actually to put, it will put, put what you've just copied uh, after the cursor several times. Right. Um, you can type a number before that P as well, can't you? Yes, you can. If you type 5p, or in this case, I think 3p, yes. and it's put that uh, buffer into your file three times. Can you not do the same on the y's? You can do exactly the same thing on the y's with the yanks. Um, or with the deletes. Uh, hey, Sam, how about move up to the second line, uh, Paul Maker, yes, right there, and do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. D, D, mm -hmm. and Ooh. we did no, nine no, lines. No. That was nine D D. Nine D D. Exactly. That's nine delete uh, those lines. The double D deletes the current line. Um, and from here, if you'll type three Y and then a capital P, <coughs> what we've done is we yank these three lines, and now we're going to paste them put them before the person. And did the capital P. He didn't do a YY. He only did one Y. He did one Y. Two so three, three Y Y. Three Y Y. Three Y. And it actually should say down here, three lines yanked. Uh, and then a capital P should paste the lines that you yanked above the person. Uh, when you're editing stuff, uh, log files, code, etc. I'm sure you'll see you've got blocks of code that you want to move around uh, and repeat that entire procedure, or maybe you don't want to repeat that entire procedure. Um, uh, but yanking and putting, copying and pasting stuff obviously has its uses. And you can do that same thing with visual modes as well. Yes, you can do the same thing with visual mode. Is this uh, is Vim going to interact with the uh, Clip buffer in, in the system at all? Yes, it can. It can. You'll just have to make changes. Mm, by, if your Vim is compiled with support for X11, even if it's running in the command line, Brian was saying that there's many locations that you can store things to. It adds a special location, which I think is the asterisk, which is tied to one of the X clipboards, and plus is tied to the other X clipboard. The same thing happens in Windows as well if you have it in the channel. Windows has no clipboard as well? No, it only has one, but okay. both plus and asterisk. Yeah. But yeah, you have it by, by default if you're using this on a remote server, obviously it won't interact. But if you're using it locally, even in the command line, it, it can talk to the clipboard. Right. Both of the clipboards. We're quite short on time at this point, uh, but there are a few functiona functionalities that I'd like to make sure we cover. If you can go back to my cheat sheet, uh, and uh, let's talk about exiting. Usually the quickest way to exit is to do two capital Z's, which will save and exit the file. Oh, oh we have one out. We want to do some undo's first. Okay. All right, now you can save. Is that a capital Z? Yeah. Yes, capital Z, capital Z. So we've exited. Uh, let's go ahead and go back into our file. And let's go ahead and go back to the cheat sheet. The tilde character, which is this squiggly line 
uh, will capitalize whatever is underneath the cursor. This is really great if you find that you don't want to have to delete that character and replace it with something else. Let's go back to our test buffer and try. See, I'm going to put the cursor somewhere and do a bunch of tildes. And let's capitalize stuff. Perfect. And so I think that what uh, Sam is doing here is he's just doing capital Z, cap or tilde, 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 tilde. If you kept doing it for the entire line, it should, uh, yeah, it should use it moves, it'll, it'll, it'll well. invert the case of uh, how he's doing it. And it does move, it does move the cursor forward. Yeah. If you type five tilde, it will run the tilde command five times and change all five of these characters to something lowercase. Oh, so it, it doesn't just make them uppercase, it toggles it. Yes, it, exactly. It will toggle the case. That's exa exactly the case. There's another longer command for doing just capitalization. Uh, what else do I hear? Uh, a dollar sign will move the cursor to the end of the line. So we're here. Sam, if you type a dollar sign, you must be confused with the. the get off the line with a parenthesis because it's, it's high in parentheses for some reason. There you go. So we move the cursor from here to right here. That's how you get to the end of the line really quickly, or you can get to the end. Back to the cheat sheet. Colon dollar sign jump here. Very good, column dollar sign to go to the end of the file. Um, or up in case G. The percent is a pretty neat one. Let's go back to our cheat sheet. This Sam, if you could put your cursor on any of the friends mm -hmm. and do a percent. It's not going to be in that clear because of the stupid highlighting. Okay, uh, so what's actually happening here is his, as he hits the percent, it's moving his cursor to find the matching parent. Okay, so, so it's finding the parent that matches this. How do you move Which is over here. So it's actually moving the cursor as he types. Uh, you can tell one is getting darker and one is lighter. I believe the, the darker one is like teleporting. Yes, pretty much. Now so you got a portal here, you got a portal here, and you're just moving. Now if you make that uneven, it'll, it'll always match the nearest one. That <laughs> it goes to the one that matches it. Really and I'm pretty sure if you have a huge... Oh yeah, they're on, they're on the wrappings. There they are. Those, those are fold marks. Oh. And it, yes, matches, and it matches not only parens, but it should also match these squiggly braces, and it should match the square braces as well. I think it does uh, X and L tags as well. It's kind of... I turn off that. I turn off the match highlighting on mine, but that's like in the default. Or not new. And this is really great for coding, and you make these huge nested commands, and you're not sure what the heck's going on with your parent, and where does this parent go, and where, where am I, and I'm totally lost. Uh, this feature will let you find, figure that out and figure out what matches with what. Back to the cheat sheet. Yes, Chuck? Did you have shown that initial code highlighting? No. Um, this is the symbol, this is the introductory pin talk. So, so it does code highlighting, it also does it have code folding capabilities? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. How are we close are we on time? Um, I'm just having a four seven minutes five minutes over already. Uh, we want to start. We want to um, start closing up, and I can throw in some teasers to answer Josh's question while we try to put up the chairs and stuff. No. Okay. Uh, because we also have to talk about <laughs> uh, a zero. We'll move the cursor to the first column of the current line. A minus. We'll move you to the first character of the previous line. Plus will move you to the first character of the next line. They're pretty much the same thing. Not exactly the same thing as up and down. Um, forward search we talked about. And the next, the last thing that we definitely need to talk about is the dots. Oh. Okay, so back to the Let's next. go back to the end. Oh. So somebody give me a command. Uh, CF, underscore. CF underscore. Okay, C cool. F underscore. So let's try that. C F underscore. Where am I right now? Yeah. C F underscore. Alright, so that has changed from the current cursor position to the oh. first underscore that we encountered. Uh, so go ahead and make some kind of change there. Just go ahead and type uh, type in Chachki's name. Oh, he had exited from insert mode before he did that. Um, but it's okay. I'm not sure 
turn off all this to the work. <coughs> so let's try uh, If you type a period now, I was going to go back to the simpler file. All right, same thing. CF underscore. All right, so that's going to let us change this work. I'm going to type chotking. Underscore, maybe. Okay. And if you press a period, it's going to repeat the previous command. After you exit, you have to Yes, I'm sorry. You have to, you have to hit escape to go back to enter our command. Mode. If you hit a period now, retype it now. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, yeah. That's not my fault for getting super command. Now type period, which isn't going to do it. Go down to the next line. So why didn't this work? It didn't work because the F goes to the next character specified on the current line. In this place, we don't have anything on the current line. The <laughs> what did you type? I just kind of like those big periods. Five hundred thousand lines in that file, Dylan. Five hundred thousand lines in the file. Okay, another command. So if we go to the beginning of the word invoke, <coughs> on one of these lines, invoke something. DW. I uh, guess, and we do DW, that will delete the current word, which deletes the entire thing because underscores in this situation are considered part of the word. So we type dot now. Cool. Type dot. It repeats it. It's deleted that word. All right. So we have to have it. It has to be command from the command, you know, when you're in the escape condition, rather than just uh, typing something in while you're in the insert mode. Right. If you're in insert mode and you press a period, it'll, it'll type a period. Okay. If you're in command mode, it will Normal repeat mode. the current. Uh, repeat the last command of type. That actually technically happened with what we were using. It's just a bad file. And a bad, it was just a bad example for that file. Um, but if you have a file where you've just done a, a very complicated command, like you want to change or substitute three characters in the next word for one, two, three, and you're going to want to do that a bunch of different places. You can do it one time, and then let's say do a search for the next current, and do a period, and it'll repeat that command, and it'll substitute those next three, three, three characters. Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah, it's almost like a macro. Yes, it is. It is very similar to a, to a macro. Um, or if you were say, let's say you wanted to delete lines, you hit DD to delete one line. And then you want to delete, delete, repeat that command. You just keep hitting period and deleting those lines. Uh, so the moral of the story, I guess, mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. uh, is that VI is a very powerful and very function-filled editor. It does take a little bit of time to get used to. And you do have to learn what some of these cryptic symbols that you're assembling into long commands are doing uh. <coughs> um, and what they're going to do. But once you learn some of them, you can start figuring out how, figuring out how to put them together for some very, very powerful results. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I have read that back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, they introduced yeah. um, some, of their sec some of the secretaries to VI to use for editing Files. Uh, I don't even know all of what, what all they, they would have used, but they actually love using VI. Um, once you get a hold, get a hang of, of what you're doing, a lot of it ends up being very intuitive. You start dedicating brain matrices to pieces of these commands and, and how to do it. Um, and I, I, I've noticed um, in, in one of my last jobs, uh, we had a bunch of older accountants. Older women who were accountants 
who you know then write down all of everything they need to do. And it's a lot easier to do something along the lines of three W, three DW, than it is to write down move the cursor, the mouse cursor to here, highlight this section of the word, type press delete, and then type the new text. Um, it was short in the words. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of an, uh, an example of one. Um, okay, were there any questions before we go further? Yeah. Or finish? Yeah. I, I've done all this editing to a file. How do I get out without losing all the saves? Uh, set, uh, settings. Changes? Capital Z, capital Z. We'll save uh, save your, your changes uh, to the current file that you edited. How do I quit? And then it'll quit. It'll save your changes. Uh, you can also use colon W to write your changes, and colon Q to quit. Uh, this really gets more into EX commands, and uh, I really wish we had another five or ten minutes to go through all that, but we really just don't. Yeah, next, uh, next meeting. Hopefully we can talk about it next time. Just use ZZ to save your files and make sure it's something you fail to change. If you don't want to save your changes, colon Q, exclamation. Exclamation means do it anyways. Exclamation mark means do it anyways, exactly. Force that change. That's it, that's all I got. Cool. All right. This, by the way, Chachi, is what my home config looks like with a sidebar of browsing files and projects I'm working on. Holy crap. Um, it looks better with a much smaller font, of course. But syntax highlighting, well, maybe I sent you a rest about folding. Yes. No, there's a Z command that handles folding. So if I type Z, ZC, uh, I don't think I type Z there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Use the keyboard. No, I can use it. I think that it's fold method is not set right now. I have another color. Go to the F and try it. There we go. Yeah, uh, it doesn't fold, and this one is set for only folding markers. It can fold on syntax as well. And then, yes, we probably will. Yes, in 15 minutes, uh, we'll have closed. <laughs> in 15 minutes, we'll be closed. So that's fine.